Thank you, Susan. Uh, I need to add another rule to my list of golden rules. Never follow Pran Yoganathan when you're... Uh... <laughs> but it's time to uh, dumb things down and I'm just the man to do the job. <laughs> Okay, can we really put type 2 diabetes into remission? Well, I don't need to tell this audience that diabetes is a massive problem. Throughout the world, over 500 million people with, uh, with diabetes. And uh, the cost is, uh, I don't know how they work out these costs, but uh, you know, $966 billion, it sounds like a lot, of, uh, a lot of money. What about in Australia? You know, we have uh, 1.3 million people diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. The general consensus is that there's probably another five to 700,000 people who are undiagnosed. There's probably two million people with pre-diabetes. It's a massive problem in this country. An average of nearly 200 di new diagnoses of, of diabetes per day. And it keeps going up and up. We had a little drop for a while, we got excited, but away we go again. And incredibly expensive, you know, $9 billion uh, a year in Australia. You know, what could we do with $9 billion? We could buy another submarine, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> As we know, it's not just type two diabetes, it's all those complications of, uh, of diabetes. You know, the, it's the most common cause of blindness, the most common cause of amputations. We've heard today about its relationship with kidney disease and cardiovascular disease. And uh, it, Alzheimer's is referred to as type three diabetes, such as the relationship between, uh, between those. It's a massive underlying problem in our, in, our, in our epidemic of chronic disease. And it's been shown that uh, you know, every decade of earlier diagnosis of diabetes is associated with uh, three to four years of reduced life expectancy. Horrendous. And I, uh, I'll bring you this quote, you know, type two diabetes is the biggest health problem in Australia today. And that's uh, from a very eminent uh, wanker. <laughs> but we're told in medical school that uh, you know, type two diabetes is a chronic progressive disease. You're on medication for life, there's no solution. Not so. Diabetes can be reversed. And are we gonna, what term are we gonna use? You know, you keep, uh, what, shall we say that uh, we can cure diabetes? Well, that's probably a bit, uh, a bit radical. You know, you, you probably don't cure people because if they go back into the bad habits, they'll, they'll get back again. What about uh, reversal? Can we reverse diabetes? Well, I was uh, discussing with a very eminent uh, endocrinologist and uh, he said, no, 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 you put your car into reverse, you can't put diabetes into reverse. He thought that was incredibly funny, but uh, I guess he's an endocrinologist. He's not known for their sense of humour. Um, <laughs> the term that is, uh, apologies to anyone in the audience, um, <laughs> the term that is being used, though, is, is remission. And uh, we keep hearing this term. It's a buzz term these days in diabetes, remission. And what is the definition of remission? Well, a number of uh, the major sort of di international diabetes organizations got together and came up with a definition of remission. And that was your HbA1c of less than 6.5% for, um, uh, for at, least, at least three months after cessation of glucose lowering pharmacotherapy. And that's pretty much the accepted version now. Diabetes Australia has uh, pretty much adopted a very similar version to that. Pretty high bar, no medication at all, after three months and less than 6.5. But it gives no recognition, for instance, to those who've reduced their HbA1c to, six, to less than 6.5 while remaining on medication. You might have a patient uh, whose HbA1c was 10.2, uh, for instance, after three months, uh, they're reduced to, to 6.2 but they decide they want to remain on metformin for various reasons uh, and so on. So they're not defined as being in remission. But surely that reduction is very significant for a patient's metabolic health and, uh, and the risk of complications. So I'm proposing that we have three stages of remission. Same wanker who got it before. <laughs> Stage one is that the HbA1c rem remains below 6.5% for at least three months while taking anti-diabetic medications. Stage two, the same thing while just on metformin. And stage three is that definition more widely used of no medication at all. Now we know that there are three proven ways 
to put type 2 diabetes into remission. We have bariatric surgery. We have a very low calorie diet. You're all familiar with the, uh, with the direct trial. Um, and uh, Professor Roy Taylor from Newcastle, England, who uh, believe has come out very clearly and stated that type 2 diabetes is a reversible condition. He obviously didn't speak to our endocrinology friend. But uh, the direct, direct trial basically uh, imply their big argument is that weight loss causes uh, reversal or remission of diabetes. But I would argue, is it weight loss or is there something else? The direct trial uh, showed gave people a diet of uh, 850 calories a day, of which 52% um, of them were carbohydrate, and so they actually were both uh, low calorie but low carb diet as well. So was it the low calorie or the low carb that did the trick? And we know that the third way of putting diabetes into remission is uh, with a low carb, healthy, uh, healthy fat diet. And there's lots of evidence around. There are, uh, there are now uh, 22 randomized controlled trials about the use of uh, um, comparing the use of low carb to low fat in, uh, in uh, treatment of diabetes. And uh, in all 22 of those studies, the low carb diets reduced, caused a reduction in HbA1c. The reduction was greater in low carb in 19 of the 22 studies. And 14 of those 19 were statistically significant, whereas in none of the, uh, the studies which, which low fat showed better were statistically significant. So pretty clear, randomized control, the best level of evidence uh, of, uh, of the benefits of low carb. And similarly with systematic reviews, there are also 22 systematic reviews looking at the relationship between low carb diets and, uh, and type two diabetes. And the most uh, recent study was by Jahedi et al. and published in 2022. And if we quickly look at uh, those, they looked at um, 50 trials uh, with over 4,000 patients. And uh, at six months, compared to a carbo high carbohydrate, every 10% reduction in carbohydrate intake uh, reduced HbA1c, as well as fasting plasma glucose and body weight. And you can see there, there's a steady reduction in, uh, in HbA1c with reduction of carbohydrate intake. Very nice straight line. Ansel Keys be proud of that straight line. <laughs> and as well, you know, not just HbA1c, but, uh, but um, fasting glucose, body weight, um, and, and various other, and, and blood pressure and so on were, were reduced. So clear systematic review and RCT evidence of, uh, of reduction of uh, remission. And there's a couple of uh, David Unwin studies. Uh, this one, um, for those choosing a lower carbohydrate dietary approach, it's possible to achieve a 46% drug-free type two diabetes remission in uh, his primary care practice in the UK. And here, it, he showed that uh, improved diabetic control in 97% of those uh, interested in the approach, sustained for an average of 33 months, and 77% uh, of those adding a low carb approach in the first year of their type two diabetes achieved remission. What he did show was that the sooner after diagnosis of your type two diabetes, the better chance you had of getting people into remission, which I guess makes, uh, makes sense. There's only been one systematic review of, uh, of, the, of uh, putting type two diabetes into remission with low carb, and, uh, and that showed, um, that looked at 23 trials and showed um, a, uh, the low carb diets were associated with a 32% increase in remission of, uh, of diabetes. And pretty impressive, uh, impressive numbers. So I guess there is plenty of uh, evidence that a low carb approach can put diabetes into remission. What about digital online apps and programs? Um, well, a quick look around the world at, uh, at the, uh, the apps that have, uh, that have tried this. Firstly, in the UK, Many of you would f be familiar with the low carb program run by um, uh, diabetes.co.uk and they published a uh, review of their uh, outcomes after one year and showed a, uh, um, a reduction in HbA1c from 9.2 to, uh, to 7.3 on average. Uh, so they're quite a significant weight loss and this is a, a very effective program. It's been done by over 400,000 people in the UK. 
in the uh, in the US, uh, and it's also been rolled out by the NHS, which is uh, which is pretty significant uh, that the NHS has actually realised that low carb works and uh, has promoted that uh, that program. Maybe we could do something like that in Australia. Maybe who knows. In the, in the US, Verta Health, and many of you are familiar with the Verta Health program, and uh, a similar program promoting a low-carb diet in, in patients with, uh, with type 2 diabetes. They've published uh, their results annually, um, and uh, you can see there that uh, one of their, their papers looked at 60% uh, at reversal rates. So uh, pretty impressive results and an average HbA1c of less than uh, a reduction of 1.3. As Susan mentioned a couple of years ago, we decided we'd uh, start our own Australian program. We started with an app-based program, and subsequently it's now both an app-based and a web-based program of Defeat Diabetes. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have uh, Paul Mason and Nicole Moore help me with that, uh, that program, and we've now had over 10,000 people do the, uh, do the program. We, uh, we looked at uh, our first uh, thousand odd cohort, and uh, and showed that 66% uh, of those who had had reduced their HbA1c from the diabetic range of above 6.5 to uh, to less than 6.5, and the other results were equally as Im impressive. 92% uh, had uh, achieved weight loss, an average of, uh, of eight kilograms. 82% uh, had reduced their waistline. But, you know, that was just a survey and uh, that doesn't really count for, uh, for research purposes. So we uh, commissioned a research study uh, through La Trobe University, headed by Professor George Michonis. And so we, what we're looking at is uh, 100 consecutive patients with type 2 diabetes who get put on their Defeat Diabetes program through their GPs. So we've recruited 140 GPs and um, we've now almost finished uh, recruiting, but there are still a few spots. So if there are any GPs who are in the audience who would like to, uh, to uh, be involved in that study, you get uh, CPD points from the college. If you, uh, if you refer us a patient, I've got some, uh, some brochures down there and uh, we could certainly do with a few more patients to finish. But uh, what I can do is release some of the preliminary data. And this is the first time that we've, uh, we've talked about this. And uh, we've got uh, 65 of our subjects with three month data and 35 with, uh, with six month data. And you can see the three month data, uh, more than 80% have reduced their, uh, their HbA1c, improved their glycemic control. More than half now have from who had a uh, HbA1c of over 6.5, so therefore were, uh, were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. More than half of them, after three months, have a non-diabetic level of HbA1c under 6.5. The uh, average reduction was about one, and the average weight loss is, uh, is four and a half kilograms in three months. The six month data, there's, uh, there's obviously less, uh, there's 35 in that, but uh, the results seem even better at, uh, at six months. So we're, uh, we're pretty excited. Now you might think, well, uh, you know, average reduction of HbA1c, one, that doesn't sound like very much, does it? But it's actually pretty significant. And if you look at the, uh, the, the impact of reducing your HbA1c by 1% by, uh, only, um, uh, then you can see here on the, on the graph that there are some pretty dramatic changes uh, and reduction in complications of diabetes by reducing that HbA1c by 1%. I'll just share the results of a couple of, uh, couple of patients with you. Uh, this is uh, one subject who uh, is actually not in remission yet. Uh, we've only got three month data on, on this subject, but you can see their, HBA, their fasting blood glucose has gone from 15 to 10. Their HbA1c has gone down from 9.4 to 7.0, so they're not yet in remission, so they're a failure according to the endocrinologists, but uh, I would argue, you know, it's probably pretty helpful. Um, their, uh, their BMI has come down, their, their weight uh, and their blood pressure has significantly reduced from you know, 177 on 93 to 134 on 87. Interestingly, their vision has improved. Uh, they have no nocturia, no snoring. Their tinnitus has improved and they had a neuropathy and they, 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 that has improved. So they're not in remission. So according to the endocrinologists, that's a failure, but clinically, they're much better. Uh, in their 50s. So subject 47 um, went from a baseline of 9.9 .9 to, uh, to 5.8 in three months. Their weight went down uh, then five kilograms. Another subject, subject 19, went from 11.9 to 5.9. 
But, you know, the direct trial people and, and many people argue, well, it's all about weight loss. It's just because they lose weight. Well, this person's actually gained weight. It's actually 0.4 of a kilogram. So let's say it's the same weight. And yet, their HbA1c has gone down significantly. So as I said, if there are any GPs out there, please, uh, please help us. And uh, I've got, uh, as I said, I've got the brochures down here if you'd like to uh, refer patients onto, the, onto this study. We, uh, we don't need many more, but we need a few more, and uh, it'd be great to, uh, to finish that off. So, um, Defeat Diabetes, we've recently put out a book that uh, is a companion to, uh, to the program called the Diabetes, uh, the Diabetes Plan. So, can we really put type 2 diabetes into remission? Yes, we can. And even for those who don't make the cutoff, the majority will improve their glycemic control and presumably reduce their risk of complications. So thanks for your time.